Jesus, we just thank you in the mighty name of God for the word that's about ready to come forth. And as I obey your voice, I thank you for the 12 steps, Lord. You're asking me to move away from it, but we're going to move into something else. And I just thank you for this word. And you just amen. amen. All right. Okay, y'all got the 12 steps. Amen. Sir. Read them. Match them up with the NA program. They're yours. That's what the Lord told me now. Throw it away now. Amen. I don't know why, but I'm going to do this. So what he told me to talk about now was simply this. Obey God. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's it. Simply obey God. So we're going to hit some scriptures on simply obeying God. Amen. Amen. I love it. So let's start out at Deuteronomy chapter 11. I thought I was going to do 12 steps all day. See, whatever you have planned, you have to be spiritual enough and obedient enough to know that God is saying no. Amen? Amen. The reason why, can I be honest, the reason why I put 12 steps up here today is because I was told not to preach. But I said, okay, I'll teach the 12 steps. You know, compromising again. So I made a plan to say, okay, because I'm going through this right now, and this person believes, who I love him, and he believes I should not preach because of what I'm going through and the trust of God and all that. I said, okay, I'll teach the first steps. No, God said, don't preach what I told you. Hello. So, I'm going to God. I'm going to And plus, I got it all out now. Anyway. <laughs> All right, Deuteronomy chapter 11. What's this? Chapter 11. Starting at verse 26. Yeah! Righty. Amen. <laughs> Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Ooh. Mm, a blessing if you obey. My goodness. Everybody say obey. Oh, oh, obey. If you obey. My God. <laughs> the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you this day. A curse. Everybody say curse. A curse, a curse if you will not obey. <laughs> the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day. To go after other gods. You see that's lowercase g. Everybody got that in their word? Yeah, Every right. time you see that word case G, it means a what? Uh, idol. 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 Uh, a demon. Yeah. False God. Our God is always mentioned in capital G. Amen? Amen. Yeah, right. To go after other gods which you have not known. Amen. Which you have not known. Obey. Simple. God laid before you. Obey him and his commandments. Or a curse if you do not. Why Warren that's Old Testament? Still a problem. Oh yeah. Grace is on it, but it's still a problem. Amen. Grace is on it, but it's still a problem. Go to Romans 5. <laughs> Romans chapter 5. Look at verse 19. 519 says, For as by one man's disobedience, yes. many were made sinners. Who's that one man? Adam, right? By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, shall many be what? Righteous. See, let me tell you something. God didn't kill Jesus. He laid it down. He laid down his life. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Does God kill you? By the law, he can, but by grace, he can't. Uh oh. <clears throat> you want to keep living? All you got to do is start speaking right. God has the power to kill you, but he made a law that says, I'm going to let you live for what? How many years? Mm -hmm. I used to say 70. 120, 120 now. I don't know where we got the 70 from, but I guess we, but it's really 120. So you can live 120 years. Most human beings don't want to live that long anyway. I know I don't. But, um, but you can choose that. Amen. Amen. So God has the power to kill you. But he has the grace to give you the power to live. The choice is yours. Amen. 
But Jesus, through obedience, what did he say? Because you are my friends, I laid out my life for you. So Jesus laid it down. God didn't put him on the cross and kill him because Jesus could have made that decision not to go, couldn't he? Mm -hmm. Didn't he? Couldn't yeah. he? Hello. Because yeah. he was in the garden of Cassidy saying, take this cup from me. He prayed it three times and sweated great globs of blood. Can you imagine the stress he was under when you are sweating blood? Hello. And some of you just sweating a little bit. Try sweating some blood. Come on. Knowing and making that decision to go to the cross to die for all mankind. He did that for you. Amen? Amen. So, by Adam's disobedience, because Jesus is also called the, what, the second Adam, right? Amen. The second Adam cleared the law. Yeah. See, the devil, <laughs> the devil was mad at Jesus for one thing. He already knew that was God in the corner and in the flesh, right? But, watch this, it was a man who gave up the earth. So it had to be a man to take back the earth. Adam gave up the earth through his disobedience. So Jesus had to come in the form of a man to take back the earth from, from the devil. So that means whatever the devil was taking from you, Oh, y'all, boy. <laughs> Whatever the devil's taking from you, you have the power to take it back. Hey, that's right. Amen. Amen? Come on, man. Mm. Second Corinthians. Y'all gonna make me go down a different road. Second Corinthians. Because, see, I'm ministering to myself now. I got to go out here and live this thing. <laughs> see, application. Anybody can stand up here and preach. Anybody can stand up here and give you a bunch of knowledge. And anybody can stand up here and give you a bunch of uh, application. But do anybody stand up here and tell you they're having a hard time doing it? Nobody tells you they're having a hard time doing it? I'm the only preacher that comes here and says I'm having a hard time doing this. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Well, then I got to tell you the truth. That's right. Christianity is wonderful, but it's hard. Because yeah. this flesh wants what it wants. Amen. It wants what it wants. Your battle for the rest of your life is going to be this flesh. You can spiritualize it all day long. You can pray in tongues, fall out of the spirit, and get right back up and be a demon. I don't care. I don't have plenty of hands laid on me, fell out, got up and still went out and got hot. A lot of times I fell down and slain in the spirit just so I can get some money out of him so I can have some money to go get. Because I knew that preacher was going to give me some money. He laid hands on me, I dropped like a fly. Got up, hey man, you know, I can use 25 dollars. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't be phony? Yes, you can. It's a con game. Who's the biggest con? We who are in addiction. But now, it is real. Saying in the spirit is real. For those of you who never had it happen, it is real. Who been saying in the spirit? Some of y'all never. But it's got to be phony. Oh. Okay. Oh, where's that, Lord? Lord just told me to take it here. I think it's in John, John, chapter John 19. And I'm going to tell you right now, just to have hands laid, you know, even if, you know, just because a person touched me, I couldn't stand on guys who would smack me upside of here like they were punching me. They will bend my neck all the way back until I fall down. You know? Sometimes just a word got to be spoken to you, you fall down. Because I remember when I first got born again, I didn't believe it because they used to watch some phony preachers on TV. You know, woman in the wheelchair, the cave, and all that. You know, I'm smoking a joint because that's the only thing that left on TV, and I'm laughing. Oh, that stuff will never happen to me when I got born again. All that stuff ain't real. It ain't going to happen to me. First time I met my bishop, <laughs> you know, he came to me. It was like his breeze just knocked me down. Boom. I got up. What the heck happened? That's why I know it's real. But watch Jesus here in, in um, John. <clears throat> I got to show it to you because the Lord told me to show it to you. I think it's 19. And I just got finished talking about the um, uh, Garden of Gethsemane, didn't I? Yep. The, 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 the pilot said, well, send them where the, 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 it's finished. Nope, keep going. Uh, open the word. Is that, no, work. Keep going. And keep my word. Blah, blah, blah. There you go. Right there, 18. I'm sorry. There you go. All right. Start at verse 5. No, verse 4. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek you? 
They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. Amen. I am he. Pay attention to that I am. I am he. And what happened next? And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Yeah. 500 soldiers at one time. Because he said, I am he. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Can you just speak a word and knock down 500 men? Why is that so important? Because he spoke his real name. Oh, oh, he spoke his real name. Oh, y'all not getting that. Come on, now. What is God's real name? I am. I am. I am. Self-existing one. Amen. I am he. Let's keep reading. Verse 7. <laughs> then asked he them again, who you seek? And they said, Jesus and Nazareth. They got dumbfounded. They don't even know what happened. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If then you seek me, let these go their way. Now ain't that powerful? He's showing you what you can do. Let your people come to you with lack of confidence and negativity and no support, and you just look at them and say, "Don't you know I am he?" Oh, y'all ain't getting it. Yes, sir. You won't fall. No, I ain't, cause I am he. You ain't no real Christian. No, I'm not, but I'm he. Y'all ain't getting it. Speak who you are. And watch him fall down backwards. Oh, look at the silence in this room. <laughs> Every example Jesus has given to you. You will never be nothing. You can't be nothing. Oh, yes, I am, because I am he. He told me I am he. Hello. Why? Because I'm an heir. I'm a son. I'm adopted. Y'all, y'all, y'all gotta grant this, man. Everything Jesus did was an example for us to use. Yes, amen. Because we're what sons do. Amen. All right, back to the lesson of <laughs> God. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 10. Yep. Oh, y'all got something out of that. Yeah. That's yeah. powerful. Mm -hmm. There you go. So if you don't believe they're slain in the spirit, who it is? And it's also in Psalms, it's everywhere. Because I had to find this stuff. You know, in my mind, my crazy corrupt mind, I need to know where everything is. Show me. I got a question. I ain't going to run to some spiritual advisor. I want to go find it for myself. Amen. I got enough books, enough dictionaries, enough of everything that I've been taught to go look for it myself. Amen. Amen. Stop accepting. Oh, and you know, go ask the question, write it down from them, and then go search it for yourself. Amen. And just because I got a revelation on I am he, you might get another revelation on I am he. He might get another revelation on I am he. You think God just put one meaning? <laughs> no, the meaning is for you and whatever condition you're going through. Amen? Amen. Amen. It may not be the same thing I'm going through, but it may minister to you differently. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. That was a side break. Uh, famous scripture starting at verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down what? Imaginations. Amen. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yes. Through the obedience of Christ. And having in the readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You want to stop certain things in your life? Obey oh God. You're going through hell? Obey oh God. It stops it. Say yes to things you would never normally say yes to. Oh. Especially in a ministry like this. It shouldn't be no. Unless it's something corrupt or something leading you to sin. When anybody asks you to do something, it should always be yes. I don't feel like it. Yes, anyway. Oh, it's a character test. You're in a character. You think you're in a drug program. You're in a character building program. Amen. 
Do you realize that? I'm saying you're in a drug and alcohol. You are in a character building program. And the effects of it will get you off drugs. Not just drugs and alcohol. It'll stop you from fornicating, stop you from lying, stop you from cheating, stop you from all sorts of lasciviousness. That's what this is about, and it will change you from the inside out. Your outer appearance means jack. It just, what I can see on you on the outside means something on the inside has changed. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. All of us in addiction, we can look at each other and tell what kind of drug we did. Amen. <laughs> but when I can't tell no more, you can change from the inside out. Now, I got you clean on the inside out. Now I got to clean up this. Just thinking and thinking. And the only way to do that is simply obey God. Mm -hmm. Simply obey God. Amen? Matthew 4. Mm -hmm. Matthew 4. I hope God didn't want me to continue on the 12 steps. Mm -hmm. I hope you got enough. Amen? Amen. Amen. Or did y'all want me to? Amen. I got to obey God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Starting at verse 1. And we're going to get this little story here. Here we go. Ready? Matthew 4, starting at verse 1. Yes. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be what? Tempted of the devil. Mm. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Mm. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually quoting Deuteronomy 8.3. <clears throat> He's using the word on the devil. You want to use the word on somebody, stop using it on your brother. Use it on the devil. Mm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh. Yeah. Give your brother encouragement. Amen. Give the devil the truth, the scripture. Amen. Now, if your brother's for the devil, give him the truth. But stop Bible bashing your brother. Amen. Good God Almighty, like you, Mr. Legalist. Bet y'all find something wrong with you. What's that verse? What's that parable that says? If there is a spinner, then your brother <laughs> first take the big old tree out of your eye, then you can remove the little spinner out of your brother. That's the Amen. 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 All right. But he's quoting Deuteronomy 3. Verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and seeth him on the pinnacle of the temple. Now look at that. He already gave him a verse, but did the devil leave? Nope. Now, we tell you now, quote a scripture and the devil run, right? Mm -hmm. No, that scripture ain't said that. That scripture says, submit unto God. And then we're going to go in a minute. So, even though Jesus quoted him a scripture, he's still standing there. Right. Still tempted him. Hit him with the truth. Why? The devil know the verses better than you. The devil know the Bible better than you. That's right. He's been here longer than you. You cannot fight him with your own strength. Oh my goodness. Amen. I'm preaching on myself. You can't fight him with your own strength. That's why obeying and submitting yeah. to God is so important. Amen. Verse 6. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. Now I'm trying to get Jesus to kill himself. You been there? I don't want to smoke this no more. I'm going to go kill him. I'm going to jump up here. I'm going to take this pistol and swallow it for oh. Kill yourself. Because that's all I'm trying to get you to do. Whew. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give the angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash that foot against the stone. The devil's quoting scripture. Mm -hmm. Hello? He's quoting scripture. What is he quoting? Psalms 91, verse 12. So Jesus threw his scripture, the devil scripture. What are they having? A sword fight. That's what they're having. It's called a rhema word. You ever heard that term? A specific word. But you get that specific word from the devil. Jesus ain't have a Bible with them in the wilderness. People were talking about the Bible's just sword. The Bible ain't just sword. 
It's the Bible in you that's your sword. Yes. Come on. You carry a Bible everywhere. I carry Bibles in the crack houses. Smoked on the Bible. Cut a crack on the Bible. Smoked it off the Bible. It didn't protect me or cut anything. But when I began to speak it from my heart, Come on. and it began to live in me, it became the mightiest sword I've ever had. Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all don't like me today. <laughs> Verse 7. Jesus said unto him, It is written. Here you go quoting again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He quoted Deuteronomy 6.16. And again, the devil taking him up. Look at that. all that verse. The devil ain't went nowhere. The devil ain't went nowhere. They quoting scripture back and forth. Are you in this? Because it will happen to you too. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. And again, the devil take him up in the sea of Lehi Mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. When you graduate, that's the first thing he's going to show you. What you've been missing. Oh, Y'all yeah. oh, ain't hearing me here. Come on. You're going to come off this place and you're going to want to show you everything you've been missing. Every little tiny hiding you wanted, he's going to walk by you. Every little bar you used to go at, he's going to show it to you. Everything you used to do and say, he's going to present it to you freely. Things that you never could get for free now are laying on the ground waiting on you to pick it up. I might have told y'all this story when I first quit smoking. You know, I'm a boy, I gave it up and I'm praising God, skipping down the street, speaking and talking. What's laying on the ground? Because before that, smoking crack and everything else, I was picking up cigarette butts off the ground. Oh, I'm the only one, right? <laughs> Trying to get some tobacco. Instead of buying a pack of cigarettes, I'm going to buy some crack and I'll find a cigarette or mouth. Oh, see, I keep it real with you. But this day, I'm walking. Good queen. And what is on the ground? A whole pack of brand new new parts. 100. <laughs> so I'm skipping and I'm walking and I'm speaking and I'm talking. I'm so spiritual, I'm no earthly good. But I see them cigarettes. What I do? I jumped over them and praise God. The devil is like, I picked them bad boys up like a rat on this hook. Well, y'all ain't expecting Come that. Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't walking past a whole pack of Newport water. I'm saying, you crazy? <laughs> oh, that's too real for you. That's too real for you. It's too real. Come on, there it is. No, I picked them bad boys up as spiritually, or well, spiritually nurtured as I was coming from church. I picked them up and smoked them. And then I light one and throw the rest away. No, kept them in my bag in my Bible case, so they were all gone. And bought another pack after that. I had to fight the demon again to get the spirit to me. Don't be so spiritual, no earthly to have no good. I'm sorry, I got to tell y'all the truth, man. Verse 9. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. That's what he wants you to do. He don't want you to obey God. He wants you to fall down and worship him. In the, in the um, a Bible version called Kenneth Weiss, who all these the New Testament, he took all the Greek words and wrote them out in English. It actually says this. He wants you to fall down to your knee, taking your forehead, touching the ground, and worship to him. Pointing eastward. Who, who do that five times a day? Allah. I mean, uh, Islam. Islam. Yeah, Islam. Uh -huh. You do that five times a day? And the, what the, what the scripture said now in verse 10, then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shall thou worship. That's Deuteronomy 6, 13 to 15. Now, in the king of Greece, it says this, when, when the devil told him to bow down by touching on his knee, by touching his head to the ground, in the king of Greece, in the Greek translation, it said this, Get away from me, devil, and keep going. That's what Jesus right. said. Get away from me, devil, and keep going. Man, that was powerful. So when you're in a scriptural fight or a rainbow of word fight with the devil, not your brother, this is what you need to tell him. When it all boils down to sit with me and keep going. Ain't no need to debate. There's no need to. Even the scripture tells us we're not supposed to debate. How are you nurturing your brother? 
And if a person ain't gonna listen, that's two people talking and nobody's listening. Believe me, I was big at that. You were gonna hear what I had to say, or we gonna be up all night. Just that simple. I'm gonna get my point across. That's how stubborn I am. Amen. And most of us do like to have the last word. Everybody in addiction is stubborn. Everybody in addiction is a know-it-all. Because we think we know it all. Even our little quiet shy ones, we just don't see them. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Verse 11. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered on him. Then the devil leaveth him. When he finally told the devil, get away from me and keep going, who came? The angels. Because he submitted to God. He obeyed God. Amen? All right, what did I write down here? When you obey God, the devil has no defense against your willingness to be obedient and submissive. That again. When you obey God, the devil has no defense against your willingness to be obedient and submissive. Obedience is what drives the devil away. Mm -hmm. Submit, submitting drives the devil away. If you're having issues, submit. But he told me to do this, I never had to do this at home. So you ain't home, submit. Why well, I got to get up, I got to do that. Submit. Must be a reason why they're coming at you. Probably because Jesus loves you. If you're being picked on a lot in this ministry, that means you you, you got a blessing on your life. Amen. Something's happening. The one who ain't being picked on a lot, it's because they're not they're not really how can I put this delicate? I ain't gonna put it delicate. You're not really submitting. You learn the language. Matter of fact, matter of fact, maybe that's what we'll talk about next. What languages do you speak? Maybe that's what we're talking about now. But anyway, you ain't submitting. You learn church language. You learn to say hallelujah, praise the Lord, be encouraged. <laughs> you learn how to say that to get the cup off you. But the real guy said, look, man, I ain't with that. Then we know we got, see, I got to push your button to find out what's wrong with you. If I don't push your button, I'm not going to get you healed. I need to know what makes you angry enough to get high. I need to know what's causing you to act like a fool. So I gotta push that button in you. I gotta make you mad. I gotta make you discouraged. I understand. I'm gonna push your buttons. Because I got to find out what's wrong with you. And the only way I'm gonna find it, because anger brings out truth. Yes. Woo! You may not like me. I don't care you don't like me. I'm designed for you not to like me. But you're going to love me in the end because I'm going to bring out character defects in you that are going to help you obey God. But if you're sitting around, I'm just being all like, hey, brother, how you doing? The one who comes up sweet all the time, I don't trust him. How you doing today, brother? What are we doing today? There Get away from me. <laughs> okay, submission and submit. Let's look at some scriptures on that. James 4. Y'all know I love y'all, right? Amen. Amen. Y'all keep my family and me in prayer, man. I got a meeting tomorrow that I don't want to go to. But I got to submit. <laughs> and this is going to help me to submit. Amen. <laughs> it really is. I got to sit there and be like Jesus and keep my mouth shut. Ooh. I know everything that's going to happen is wrong. Because it's earthly, sexual, and devilish in the scripture. But God put me in that place to just sit there. And I gotta sit there and take it. And I will, Lord. I promise I will. James 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will what? He will run. See? He will run. Draw near to who? God. And he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. 
and purify your hearts. Amen. Woo, you double-minded. Who's a double-minded person up in here? Huh? You double-minded. Huh? Hallelujah, pray the Lord. You double-minded. Then get back in the room and talk crap with me. Come on. Hello. You get around staff and you pray the Lord, hallelujah. You get over with me in the room and say, man, boy, I can't wait to get out here to tap that thing. Come on. I got a honey at home, boy. She's such a freak. Oh, when I get out of here, she won't lick me like a lot <laughs> But then the staff come in. What y'all talking about? Oh, man, Jesus went. <laughs> I don't think I know what goes on. <laughs> Verse 9. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Here it is. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall what? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself. First Peter 5. Likewise, you younger, starting at verse 5, I'm sorry. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yes, all you of be all you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and give it grace to the humble. Yes. Elders, who the elders? Staff, submit to. Police, submit to. Parents, submit to. Friends in authority, submit to. People in authority, submit to. Amen? Yes. Whether you like it or not. I've never done this before. So, do it now. Hard. I've never cleaned clothes. I've never washed this. I never even had to clean my bedroom when I was growing up. I had, because that's where my grandmother and my mother were. They grew up in the South, and my grandmother believed men worked outside the home, not in the home. You know, people thought I was poor. No, I wasn't. I had to dig up the yard, plant grass, and do all that stuff, but I never knew how to. I didn't even have to clean my own bathtub. Soon as I finished taking back, my mom would come right in and clean the tub behind me. Yeah. So when I got the Teen Challenge in all these places, it was new to me. First time I washed my clothes, I bleached everything. I, I thought you had bleaching. I didn't know how to wash clothes. This is clean a dish. I didn't know what I was doing. But through this program, I learned. Make a bed. I can leave my clothes, everything on the floor, my bed be messed up. You know, I come home from school, my bed is made up, fresh sheets, everything. Clothes hung up, boom. That's what I was used to as a kid, being an only child. It ain't got nothing to do with being spoiled. It has something to do with two women who grew up in the earth that says, men work outside, women work in the house. Just that simple. Amen. Too bad we don't have it today. What did I say? First Peter 5, we that 5, right? Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in what? Due time. Due time. Casting all your care. Oh, there's one I do. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Oh, y'all need nothing to lie on that. Right. For he cares for you. Be sober. Mm. Be vigilant. That means watchful. Yeah. Amen. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So you think because you leave here, he ain't going to be looking for you? That's what he will look for you the most. He waiting for you right at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> He's waiting. I can't wait till my boy get back. Oh, my boy get back to his home party. But see, he don't know. See, the only reason why he don't know is because the devil can't read your mind. This is why you gotta have a made-up mind. See, he think he still got you because he hates anything that's like God. He don't know what's true in you or what's false in you. Only the Lord does. That's why I said, even if you're thinking negative, speak positive. Because he can only operate on what's coming out your mouth. So if you say I ain't nothing, then you ain't nothing. You say I'm an addict, then you are an addict. But if you say I'm more than a conqueror, yeah. even though you don't think so, you're going to become that conqueror. Amen. 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 Good Amen. Don't let him operate on your negativity. And speak to people who will encourage you. The only people I speak negative to is my brothers. 
Why? Because I know when they hear the negativity, they know how to put me back to positive. You know? This brother back in there at the camera. He don't want to come out my house on no, uh, without a notice. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He just pops up. He ain't seen me a couple of days. He just pop up. Yeah. They're like, where you been? Hello. <laughs> and now that's the most quietest, homeless person I ever met in my life. <laughs> but he's my best friend now, you know? Why? Because he keeps me stabilized to a certain degree. He makes me look. He knows all my names. Right, Steel? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't want him to come here and give a testimony. All right, verse 9. Whom, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while. Oh, my goodness. You're going to suffer. Who told you become a Christian you're not going to suffer? After you have suffered a while. Woo. Good. He will what? Make you perfect. He will then establish you. Strengthen you. Then settle you. But you got to suffer. Amen. No suffering. You are not going to be established. Strengthen or settled. Some of you view this as suffering. Well, maybe it is, because you've never been through nothing like this before. So it is a type of suffering. But I tell you what, it's building a foundation in you for the next guy for your family. Because these principles here, you want to take them back home to your family. You want to make sure you, I tell you, I made sure my, little, my daughter made up her bed every morning after. I made sure she got up on time. I made sure now that she was going to church. Hello. You know, now she's just like her father. Cry for her. She don't, she don't trust me. She don't trust no word from nobody. Because she reads it for herself. She don't trust prophecies that come out the Wednesday. Why? Because she has a prophecy. Now she understands it. She'll call me up and ask me for advice. But she used to call every preacher in her. Nope. The only one who ever told me the truth was my daddy. Dad! Amen. But it took her many years to get restored to her. So you who have kids, don't think you're just going to go home and get restored. I was just talking to my brother over here. It might, take, it might take 10 years. It might take 15 years. But you still got to trust God. Amen. That through that suffering, He will suffer, strengthen you. And you got to believe Him. Yeah. Even when my daughter wouldn't call me, I would still call her up at least once a month and say, Baby, Daddy, love me. I know I said it's right. not She wouldn't even answer her phone, but I'll leave a message. Every day. Once a month. Whatever. Amen. Some of you, you got to do that. You can't let your children discourage you with their immaturity. You got to be the bigger person. Whew, that was for somebody. Amen. Because you love you. We, we, even though we're a bunch of sinners and done a bunch of wrong, we still love our babies. We may have spent the money on, you know, the, the diaper money and the food money on drugs, but that didn't mean we didn't love my baby. That was the demon in me. It wasn't me that did that. It was the demon in me that did that. Amen. Amen. I still love my baby because after I spent the money and finished getting high, it felt good. Then when I sobered up, the consequences of that sin hit me and I began to cry. I can't believe I did that to my baby. Mm -hmm. Amen. Maybe that's too much too. I stole money from my baby, from my addiction. Took her little bank accounts, mm. her little piggy banks, and the change. And tick, 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 tick. Stole her little gold jewelry that I bought her for me. Yeah! Boy, you think your pin drop on I did all those things. But I could talk about them today. You know why? Because they're going to help someone else realize they're not alone. That's why you got to tell the truth when you leave here too. Don't go home and be so spiritual. You know, if you're good, I say that all the time. Go home and tell the truth. Yeah, man, I'm a wretched mess. But let me tell you, I made up my mind. Yeah, I did those things, but I'm not like that anymore. That's right. I'm only telling you I did those things to help you know that you're not alone. 
Yeah, I did it all. Just to let you know you thought you were by yourself. You're not. You're not. Amen? Amen. 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 <clears throat> Hebrews 13. More in submission and obey. Ah! And we're going to get ready to very soon. How much more I got here? <clears throat> I've been talking too much. <clears throat> we just got a few more scriptures on this. We're going to hit some obedient scriptures after this and then uh, we'll come to a close. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Uh, I don't know if it's the air in here or what. Y'all vacuum this room? Yes, uh, that's always make me snotty sky. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, every time I come here, I get all the stuff. Uh, 1317 says, <clears throat> Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves, for they watch for your soul. Yeah. They watch for your soul. So me pushing your buttons, I'm watching for your soul, man. I'm not trying to make you hate me. I'm pushing buttons to get to your soul. It's a soul issue that's going on with you. Amen. So it's my job. If I don't do it, I'm going to have to stand before God and do an accountability about it. You ain't worth that. Hello. I'm not going to hell for you. Come on. So whether you like me or not, who cares? But I ain't going to hell for you. Right. Well, when we both wind up in heaven, you might see me on the streets of gold somewhere. And I, say, I can't wait to see half the people out and let to the Lord up there and say, man, if you ain't never talked to me that day, I've never been there. Amen. Amen. Who are you going to talk to? Winning a soul don't mean me standing in front of a congregation with 400 people. Winning me a soul means whatever assignment God puts me on. How's that? When you leave here and get a job, you're on assignment for God. When you go home in front of your family, you're on assignment for God. Submit. When you're when you're standing in front of anybody, you're on assignment for God. He ain't making you pretty and looking all good again just for you. He did that to show off himself. You know? He did it to show off himself. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Let's keep, look at verse 7. No, let's finish reading that. Yeah. Obey them that had a rule over you and they submit yourselves for they watch for your soul. And they must give them a what? An account. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. Why you call some staff grief? For that is unprofitable for who? Staff? Who's it said unprofitable for? Amen. It's for you. It's for you. It's unprofitable for you. Look at verse 7. Remember them that have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. Amen. Who faith follow concerning the end of their conversation. What is their conversation? The way they're talking? The lie. Their lifestyle. That's why Christianity is your lifestyle. I don't care who don't like that. I say it all the time. My bishop is saying, man, you gotta stop. No! It's my lifestyle. You tell me it's my religion, I'm not gonna finish sinning. I'm not a Presbyterian or Mormon. I'm not a Baptist. I'm not a non denominational. I'm not Lutheran. I'm not Episcopalian. I am a Christian in lifestyle. I carry all those names. I'm not in the assemblies of God. Amen. I'm not in God and crack. I'm a minister of reconciliation. Yeah. I'm an ambassador for his name's sake. Yes. I am one who does lower duties as an ordained minister of Jesus Christ. Y'all don't like that. Oh, I have been fighting this for over three years now. Now, yes, I'm ordained by non-denominational ministry. But I realize the devil used all those things to confuse us. So I'm telling you, it don't matter what denomination you're doing, if that's the place you want to be, hey, fine. But don't put it above anyone else. Just because you're this and you're that don't make you better than so and so. Come on. I get so sick of that time. Actually, if you go to the White Baptist Church, they don't like the Black Baptist Church. Right. You go to the White Assembly of God, they don't like the Black Assembly of God. Well, so that's the Asian Assembly of God. I don't been to them all. That's right. The biggest segregated day in this country is Sunday. Amen. <laughs> the biggest racist day is Sunday. And it makes me sick. Amen. And they wonder why I don't go nowhere. Because <laughs> everywhere I go it makes me sick. Because they ain't talking about empowerment or money or do this or do that, but ain't nobody telling me to stop sinning. 
Ain't nobody telling me they can relate to me. Ain't nobody dealing with real issues. All they dealing with is prosperity and all that kind of crap. I'm sick of it. Amen. And it really makes me sick to the stomach that every Amen. week I'm there to go to a pet show. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Who somebody about you? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, time and time. You're going to rob God and you're going to pay me. Oh, man, you're going to condemn me? Yes. <laughs> yes, Lord. Don't shut him down when he's preaching good. I guess I ain't preaching no more. Amen. <laughs> yes. Obedience and obey God. Go to Jeremiah 26. Come on, we got about two more minutes. I hope I ain't hurt nobody feeling. Oh. No. You know? Do y'all tell us over and then what I be saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> and what do they do? Do y'all tell them this is just me? I'm not trying to say. Huh? I can imagine this face. Then you go like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still coming, so they. Yeah, no. <laughs> they still call me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, y'all told him the truth now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that y'all got me worried. I think I only talked to him one time. That's when Jesse was playing this one. And I got to, uh, I really want to get with Jesse. <laughs> Jeremiah 26, verse 13. Hope y'all getting blessed, man. Yeah. Ain't it funny, every time I come up here, I have a plan and God changes. Yes. Yeah. 26 verse 13. Where's 13? Oh, here it is. Therefore now, admit your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will repent him of the evil that he what has pronounced against you. That is so important. The Lord will repent of the evil he was going to do to you. And all you got to do is obey. Amen. Amen. I ain't got to even explain that one. Let's keep moving. Joshua 24. Joshua 24. What do we do? Verse 24. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. Now, that's funny. And the people said. Actually, they're being ignorant to a certain degree. Go up to 15. Go up to verse 15. Right? Now let's read down to that. And it is and it is seen, wait, and it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day. Hello. Hello. Choose you this day whom you will serve. That's right. Mm. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites. In whose land you do well. But as for me, <laughs> and my house, yes. we will serve the Lord. We will. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he for the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up in our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sights and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out the, before us all the people of the Amorites which dwell in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord. You cannot serve, for he is a holy God. Oh my goodness. For he is a holy God. He is a jealous. Do y'all know, watch this. Oh, that just hit me. Do y'all know what a guy's name is, is jealous? And we don't ever hear from him. He's a jealous God. Do you know his name is jealous? How many songs do you ever hear? Oh, he's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Nisi. But you don't ever hear. Oh, his name is jealous. I don't ever hear that. But God's name is jealous. Ooh. You know why he's jealous? You get jealous, don't you? Let somebody mess with your woman. <laughs> so if somebody mess with us and we go serve other guys, God's jealous. And he won't take care of that mess. Amen. You ain't touching mine. Hello. Amen. Oh, I love that. Be jealous on me, Lord. 
But then we realize his name is Jesus. Oh, anyway, that was a side point. Anyway, where does that leave off? Uh, verse 19. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is holy. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression nor your sin. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt. Oh my goodness, see consequences. Consequences. Woo. And consume you after that he has done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, you are a witness against yourselves. I like that. You are a witness against yourself. You're a witness against yourselves. Every time you speak the name of Jesus, you are witnessing, oh my goodness, against yourself. Because every time you speak it, I'm a born again Christian. I'm saying the devil shall prove you're not. You're a witness against yourself. You would tell people, you know, I serve Jesus Christ. Hey man, I got some blood. <laughs> oh man, I serve the Lord Almighty God. Hey man, I got some heroin. I got a few, 40 some beer. You're a witness against yourself. If you don't really believe this, open your mouth. Woo! Don't go home for claiming nothing. Because you'll be a witness against yourself. Let's keep reading. Woo! Jesus, Jesus. And Joshua said unto the people, you are a witness against yourselves that you have chosen your, you the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Amen. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods and are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord your God. Submit to God. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 4 and we're going to come to a close. But I want to encourage you to read Hebrews chapter 5. We ain't going to have enough time to get to this. Hebrews 5 verses 1 to 14. You know, you'll learn about obedience there and also Romans 6 verses 6 to 18. But we're going to hit this last one, 1 Peter 4 through 12. So just simply obey God. Amen? It's going to be Hebrews chapter 5, 1 through 14. Read it in your own time. And Romans 6, verses 6 to 18. Read that in your own time. But we're going to hit Peter, 1 Peter 4. And close with that. 1 Peter 4. Starting at verse 12. 1 Peter 4, starting at verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Hello, trials come your way. <laughs> Which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened unto you. <laughs> it coming, baby. Yeah, right. You want to proclaim being a Christian? Then trials are coming your way. Amen. Amen. Let's keep reading. But rejoice. In as much as you are partaking with Christ's suffering. My goodness. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Be happy as happy. Because if you're trusting God, I hear you, Lord. If you're trusting God, what's that verse for me? Oh, my goodness. Mm. I need to be joyful with this. I need it this day. I'm preaching to myself. Amen. Verse 14. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. If somebody tells you, you ain't saved. You phony Christian? Mm -hmm. You hypocrite? Mm -hmm. Oh man, how many times I heard that? You know the word, but you don't apply it. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff you're going to hear when you leave, gentlemen. Yeah. I watched you the other day. I thought you quit. You ain't had a cigarette in a year. Now you done picked up one. I smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to make you fuck? No, no. Oh. Mm. no. Amen. Repent and move on. If you be reproachful in the name of Christ, happy are you. For, <laughs> for resting upon you, or on their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Oh my goodness. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody. <laughs> and boy, I can trust that one. As a busybody in other men's matters. Stay out your brother, stop. Amen. What about your own 
promise you. Come on. If you're not there to encourage them, shut up. Amen. You know? If you're not there to listen to them to get past their fault, shut up. Mm. Amen. Amen. True for grace. I had to learn that one. Mm. All right. <laughs> Verse 16. Yet, if any man suffer as Christ, as Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God first. Hello. And if it first begins at us, what shall the end be the, of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit to keeping of their souls to him and in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Simply obey God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Father, Amen. we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this word. I pray this brother God bless by it. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.